We're here at Alpine Dermatology and we are interviewing Dr. Dan Marshall. So thank you so much for taking some of your time out of your day to do this with us. No problem. With the warmer months making their appearance, we wanted to ask him a few questions about protecting our skin from the sun. What precautions can we take to, to protect our skin from the sun? Skin cancer is an epidemic, you know, the epidemic proportions in our uh, community. Last year I, I performed over 500 skin cancer surgeries oh. and so it's, there's more of it than you'd think. When we think of sun protection we often think right first of sunscreen. Sunscreen's an important part of it but let me back up a little bit and tell you you know some of the things you should be thinking about before you think of sunscreen. The first one is just avoiding the sun, you know, when you can. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to do activities like golf or mowing the lawn or, you know, earlier in the morning or later in the evening if they can. You try and avoid those midday hours of the sun when the sun's at its highest peak and the, the amount of ultraviolet radiation that you get from it is at its highest. That's the that's first thing. The second thing is when you can, find a shade structure, find some type of shelter. People go to ball games, they sit in the sun, they make umbrellas that are, are rated for sun protection. That's a good idea. So there's other types of structures that you can pack along, you know, those shade structures that would protect you. If you have the choice at lunchtime to eat your lunch in the sun or you find a shady spot, then I encourage people to find that shady spot. The next level of protection is then clothing. Ideally, you know, if, especially if you have a skin type that's susceptible to sun damage, and, and they all are, but one that's even more susceptible, then it's a good idea to have a hat that protects you. But they do make some protective shirts and what they call skins that have a UPF rating that can really protect you. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up getting sunburned, doing all the activities yeah. we did in southeastern Idaho, and, and didn't think twice about it. When I started to learn about this and started to be better, you know, it's a lot funner to go to the swimming pool and come home and feel good and not be burnt to a Yeah, dress. definitely. <laughs> And then finally, sunscreen. Tell people to think of sunscreen as your last line of defense, you know. Sun, sunscreens are not all created equal, and it's very important to use the proper amount of sunscreen. You want to look for a sunscreen that has broad spectrum coverage. A lot of sunscreens have their SPF rating, but that just rates for ultraviolet B protection. And so B are the burning rays, ultraviolet A are the aging rays. Ultraviolet A has a stronger uh, amount of energy and so when it hits the skin instead of dissipating that energy at the surface it travels deeper in the skin and it causes aging damage to the collagen and elastin and other components of the skin that are deeper which leads to wrinkling and all the things that we associate with aging with skin. A lot of the sunscreens within a couple hours the ultraviolet A protection is all burned out. The chemicals are used up and that ultraviolet A just goes right through your, right into your skin. So it's important to reapply sunscreen on a regular basis. Another myth about sunscreen is basically an SPF of 30 is adequate. Mm -hmm. And so it is if you apply it often enough and apply enough of it. How um, often would that be? Yeah, uh, depending on your activity, I'll tell people at least a couple times a day, if you're in the water or you're doing heavy work and you're sweating, then uh, you can sweat it off in an hour and a half. Yeah. It's important when it comes to sunscreen, no matter what SPF you're using, to apply plenty of it. When they do the test to determine the SPF, they have a standardized amount. One way to get by that is to use an SPF that's a lot higher. So I personally, when I'm recreating, will use a 100 plus or an 80 plus. They make really high rated SPFs. What exactly causes skin cancer? It is a multifaceted thing when it comes to that. But the main cause is ultraviolet radiation from okay. the sun. Again, ultraviolet B and ultraviolet A both play a role. Ultraviolet B, they used, they think, plays more of a role because it has that surface damage uh, more intensely. But both of them play a role. What happens is the ultraviolet energy comes into the skin. It dissipates in the skin, and as it comes through the skin, it damages DNA. Lots of times when the skin cells are damaged, then they die, and that's what a sunburn is. It's 
you know, cells that have been killed, and so it hurts. If a cell doesn't die and it's damaged just right, then it may continue to live and grow in an unregulated fashion, and that becomes a skin cancer. If you regularly tan for one year, you age your skin 10 years worth. They've also shown scientifically that one time in a tanning bed increases your risk for melanoma, which is the most, uh, one of the most deadly types of uh, skin cancer. It's uh, the most common cause of cancer death in young adults. Wow. So from about 20 to 35, somewhere in that range, that's the most common reason why people die of cancer. And a lot of that is associated with tanning. There's a lot of mistruths promoted about it. Dermatologists do use ultraviolet treatments for certain skin conditions, but we use what we call narrowband UVB, so you don't get a whole spectrum of, of damaging rays on your skin. And we also weigh that with you know, that potential that we know that it could cause skin cancer with the benefits of treating other skin conditions. We don't encourage anyone to go get tan for vitamin D or tan for, yeah. you know, we don't encourage a base tan for a trip. We just encourage you to protect your skin. Yeah. With skin cancer and what causes it, there are also some genetic susceptibilities. What um, skin types are most susceptible to skin cancer? We have what we call the Fitzpatrick classification of skin. Type 1 is the type of person that never tans, they always burn. Type 2 you know, burns, but they can also tan a little bit. Type three, they start to get into your darker skin types and or the more Mediterranean type thing where people tan very easily. Mm -hmm. And then types four and five are people with skin of color. And obviously the types one and two are most susceptible and that's mostly what we have around here. So your skin type plays a role. Sometimes the behavioral things that go on in your family play a role, like a parent's attitude towards sunscreen, like, oh, those yeah. chemicals will kill you or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which isn't founded, or, you know, a little bit of sun's good for you before you know the kid's been burned, you yeah. know, yeah. on a regular basis, and so those types of behavioral attitudes towards sun exposure also make a big difference, but skin type definitely does, you know, your redheads and fair skin, blue eyed type people mm -hmm. that are way more susceptible to it. What about those people who, like you said, Mediterranean people who, you know, mm -hmm. tan easier and they have like the mindset of, oh, I just tan, I don't burn, I don't need yeah. to wear sunscreen. So like what, in that situation? I is take skin like cancers off those guys too, so. They definitely have an advantage when it comes to that, but they're still susceptible. Okay. In Texas, I have a friend that works down there and he takes skin cancers off the Hispanics regularly. Yeah. So It can happen to anybody then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes people are worried or afraid or they just don't know if they have a lesion that's growing or something that's bleeding easily or something they're just not quite sure of or seems not right then it's way easier to take care of if they come right away. It's a lot easier to take care of a three or four millimeter lesion than it is to take care of something that's a centimeter or sometimes two centimeters.